Hey folks, what's up? In this video, we're going to see about how to approach a Fibonacci problem in the lead code. We'll start by actually discussing the recursive solution and its time complexity and then we'll further move to the better approach and then finally we'll end this video with the most optimal approach. So till then, if you're new to your channel, do hit like, share and subscribe. Till then, enjoy the video. So now let's understand the problem statement as of lead code now. So in the lead code, it says that the Fibonacci number denoted with f of n will form a sequence called the Fibonacci sequence such that the each number is the sum of the two preceding ones. That means if I want to find the value of the third number, I'll need the first two that is one first number and the second number, right? That means we need at least first two values to find any other values, right? That is why by default it is already mentioned that f of 0 is equal to 0 and f of 1 is equal to 1. Now, as you have discussed here, it is the sum of the two preceding ones. So if you want to calculate the value for f of n in a general way or a gen in a generic manner, we can write that it is the sum of f of n minus 1 and f of n minus 2. That is basically the sum of the two previous elements or the numbers, right? So let's now consider this example. n is equal to 2. That means if we want to find the value for n equal to 2, what we need 0 and 1 right so f of 0 is 0 f of 1 is 1 what is the sum it's 1 right so n for f of n equal to 2 we get the value of 1 and the explanation also states the same that f of 2 is equal to f of 1 and f of 0 that is 1 plus 0 which is equal to 1 now let's consider the example number 2 that says n equal to 3 now we can see like for 3 we need the value of f of 2 and f of 1 right now for understanding this example we can consider this previous example like for f of n equal to 2 we have already found the value that is equal to 1 right and now for f of 1 we already have the value of 1 right so what is the sum of them that is 2 right so that is why f of 2 plus f of 1 that is 1 plus 1 is equal to 2 similarly if i am going to find the value for n equal to 4 i will need f of 3 and f of 2 so f of 3 is equal to 2 and f of 2 is equal to 1 so 2 plus 1 will give us 3 that is what it is stated it here so as of now we have already had a problem walkthrough in the lead code and now let's understand this recursive tree approach how to solve this problem using recursion and then we'll be considering different ways in order to optimize our recursion so let's get started with this recursive tree so imagine we want to find the value for f of 4 right so as you have discussed earlier, what are the values that you need you know, to find f of 4? We need f of 3 and f of 2, right? Similarly, for finding f of 3, we need f of 2 and f of 1. So I can say that, I can say that for each of these node, right? I'll have two branches because these two branches will ultimately have an impact on the solution of this current cell, right? So the number of branches it is getting divided into are the number of things that are it is dependent on, right? So I can say I can say this like if at all I need to find f of four, I'll need f of three and f of two. So for every node I have here, I'll need its following or previous two numbers. So at each level it is getting divided into two. In this case, f four is uh, again divided or broke down into different branches that is f of 3 and f of 2 similarly f of 2 is broke down into f of 1 and f of 0 and now we already know the according to the base condition what is the value of f of 1 and f of 0 it is 0 and it is 1 so in order to find the value of f of 2 we need the sum of the previous two elements that is 1 plus 0 and the value is returned here so f of 2 is 1 right similarly f of 1 value we already know from the base condition it is 1 so 1 plus 1 will give us 2 right similarly if i go for f of 1 and f of 0 we know that these values have a, a value of 0 and 1 as per the base conditions this will be summed up and it will be transferred here so f of 2 will have the value of 1 similarly f of 3 is 2 f of 2 is 1 so we'll combine them and we'll get the value of 3 because we're summing up the values of two nodes in order to find the next node so this is how the recursion works here now let's understand what is the time complexity now to understand the time complexity let's analyze a very simple approach uh, to analyze the recursion 
time complexity it is well found or determined that it is a simple trick like to know how the time complexity will work in the recursion tree it's basically the number of branches number of branch raised to the power height okay so this is what the time complexity of any recursion would look like see in this case the how what is the height it will be maximum four because at last four will be get divided into like it will get divided into three and two and again three will be divided into two and one similarly if we find like this is the height is four for this three right the height is four okay i hope you know how to calculate the height uh if not you can always watch my trees video generic tree video you'll always get, get an insight about how to calculate the height so what we do basically we take the uh, maximum of left and right and add one to it and return to its parent to know the height right so if i do that we will find that the height is four here similarly that means like the height is n in this case so if i want to find the value for four f of four the height of the tree is four similarly if i need to find the value for i mean height is four so if i want to find the value for f of n the height of the tree will be n right so we have already discussed like you know to find the time complexity we need the height and the number of branches that is each node is getting divided into so we have already found the value of height that is n with respect to the value that we are going to find and now the number of branches here is two because each time we are dependent upon the previous two and we are dividing each cell into its uh recursively into its two subsequent previous cells and further it is getting re recursively called again and again so each time we are actually dividing each of these nodes into two different branches so the number of branches at each node is two right so as of now what i've discussed is like to find the number of branches and the height and once we have those we can always have the time complexity now according to the formula we have discussed above that is the number of branches raised to the power height we have this time complexity of this recursion tree as 2 raised to the power n so this is what the time complexity of this solution is now let's go over to the recursive solution in the lead code and try to implement this approach and solve them now we have already discussed like how the recursive calls are being made and how we can draw the recursive tree and how we can also estimate the time complexity of this uh, recursive approach so let's now head over to fibonacci number in the lead code problem and let's do the code okay so now uh we have already discussed like what would be the base condition as we have already mentioned with the base conditions that for f of 0 and f of 1 we'll be having the value as 0 and 1 in short i can write like if n is less than equal to 1 return n so what the statement means like if n is less than equal to 1 that means if n is either 0 or 1 in that case if n is 0 then it will return 0 if n is 1 then it will return 1 that is what it is and that means like if n is less than 1 and it will return the value of n only so whether it is 0 and 1 it will return according to that okay so now let's uh, go over to our uh, recursive calls that we have discussed now how these recursive calls are dependent so i will say like for n i will need n minus 1 and n minus 2 right how why we need because uh we have already seen that it is the sum of the two preceding two preceding ones right so now we need the value of 2 and we'll sum that out and return it so that we get the value of fibonacci of n right so let's write that value now i'll write return fib of n minus plus fib of n minus 1 and this is what will give me the value of f of n right because the sum of the fib of last two numbers will give up the value for fib of n so let's see for run go and hit run now you can see all the three cases are passed now if i will hit on submit let's see what happens 
has taken it it is accepted now but this isn't the optimized way right we are only doing the recursive approach calls and we are only writing the recursive solution but as we have already discussed the time complexity of this is 2 raised to power n because the branches each time we are getting 2 and the height may go up to n right so this is what the time complexity of this solution is so it isn't enough and it isn't optimized yet so now let's look into the optimized more optimized version of this and then later on we'll see the most optimal one now in the previous video i had already made a video on the three step approach to stall, solve any dynamic programming problem in that approach i have already discussed like how to convert a recursive solution into an optimized manner using a data structure depending upon the number of variables that are getting changed so if you haven't watched that video i will highly recommend you to please watch that now let's uh, implement that approach here and let's optimize the solution now now we have discussed like what are the number of values that are getting changed right so now we can see like only n is getting changed in the recursive calls we are making n to n minus 2 and n minus 1 so we need only a 1d one dimensional array or a one dimensional data structure right so if at all i am going to declare it here right so let's not do like this uh, let me copy it here uh, let me declare a vector of let's name it as dp and let's uh, give a size of n plus 1 and initialize it with minus 1 and why have i initialized it with minus 1 because we already know and we have already discussed in the previous of the three step approach video as well like we need to initialize the data structure in such a value in which the uh, that initialized value wouldn't appear in the recursive calls that means for any of the recursive calls this minus 1 or any value we have initialized here should not come as a result right we already know like the minimum value that you are going to have is 0 and 1 and anything bigger than this will always be positive so we can take minus 1 here right okay so now i have initialized this uh, dp array uh, with minus 1 okay now uh, let me make another function here let's call it as solve okay let me pass it as n let me pass this vector as well i am passing it as a reference okay now let's uh, paste the recursive code we have done now we need to change this fib to solve here because we are doing a recursive call in this solve function and so we need to change the name of these functions as well right now it is fine everything is good and uh, also we need to pass here the second parameter as dp here as well okay so so far so good it looks good to me now we can actually you know what we can actually now call this uh, solve function here let's call this solve function here we pass this dp value and now we'll just return the dp of n here okay because we need the value of fib of n and the fib of n value will be stored in dp of n right okay now we know the base condition is this and this is the uh, recursive call that we're making now we have already discussed like we need to check right like if at all for that cell of that data structure or that array if the value is not minus one that means that recursive call or that value or that value of n is already being calculated we don't need to recursively call it again and again we can just return it from the data structure we are using to optimize it right so we'll do the same thing here i'll write it here as dp of if dp of uh, n is not equal to minus one right that means the value has already been calculated and the recursive call has already been made and it has already been stored in that dp array right so we don't need to call it again and again we'll just return that value from here only right if at all it is not getting calculated we'll just do this recursive call in order to find that uh, dp of n value or the fib of n value and we'll store that in the dp so that next time we are going to call for dp of n we don't need to call this recursive function again and again next time it will just check here 
it will find that it is not equal to minus one so it will directly return from here so now let's give it a shot here and see how it works okay all the three cases are getting accepted now let's click on submit okay so we can see like for n is equal to zero output is minus one and why it is the case because we haven't op updated the dp here for the base conditions so i'll now write here for dp of n just store it in dp of n and then return it similar to this so we are basically we are previously not basically storing the value of zero and one in the dp array but now i have updated it to this one so that every time even if even if in the base condition it will check and once it gets it it will update in the dp array okay so let's now run it okay let's now submit it i think this should work yeah yeah it does it does yeah yeah you can see bits 100 percent because it is all optimized now we have already you know like did a great optimization here but uh, the problem is it is not still the optimal way now here the time complexity is n why it is n because previously in the recursive solution we were calculating for each cell two times like there were two branches so we are recursively calling for each of its predecessors like for n we are calculating for n minus 1 and n minus 2 and recursively it is getting calculated for every cell even if it was calculated earlier but now in this case you can see like the value of any of this n value is only calculated once not twice so there is no two branches that is forming for each recursive calls that means like if at all i have a value for f of n to uh, calculate i will only have to call f of n minus 1 and f of n minus 2 once in the entire recursive call or recursive tree right we don't need to calculate that particular recursion function again and again that means for each value like let's say for dp of 0 or dp of 1 or dp of 2 or let's say up to dp of n we are calculating only one function the whole entire recursive function call that means the time complexity is n and as the branching is not there so there is no exponential form here in the time complexity thus we have a more optimized way of the previous solution and now we have the time complexity of n now this isn't enough why because it is using an extra space of n right big of n now we need to reduce that and we need to take it back to big of one so as to have the most optimal way so now let's see into the solution where we can have actually the time complexity as big of n and extra space as a constant that is big of one now before directly going into the coding of the solution let's understand the previous optimal approach we have used a array only array where we stored the value now let's think do we actually need this entire array for every value we're calculating let's say i am calculating the value for n i only need these two cells right i don't need the remaining ones but even if our value is let's say 100 we are storing or making an array of 100 even if we, if we don't need the previous 97th one what i mean by that is like for calculating n we only need n minus 1 and n minus 2 right we are just ignoring all the values from 0 up till n minus 2 we do need that now the previous approach that we have did just imagine the case if the value of n would have been 100 we would have made an array let's say of size 100 right but we actually need a size of 100 because we are only needing the value of the last two elements in the each step we are just ignoring the rest right so do we actually need that no right we, we can also do it with the help of two values two variables right let's say i have a previous value of let's say p1 and the previous two previous values p2 that is 
this one is denoting to n minus 2 and this one is denoting to n minus 1 just imagine can we do it with these two values variables yeah we could because every time we are going to find the value of n we only need the last two values and each time we are proceeding we need to update these values actually right each time we are proceeding with the next value we need to change the value of uh, n minus 2 that is p2 with this one and the value of p1 should be updated with the new value that you have calculated now that means suppose for now n we are using n minus 1 or that is let's say uh what let's say for let's say for calculating n we need the value of p of 1 and p of 2 right so once we have calculated the value of p of 1 and p of 2 let's say now we also want to calculate the value for n plus 1 now using these two variables how can you do that now see for calculating n plus 1 we need nth value and the previous one value now the previous one value is p1 right now how to use these two values in order to get this value now what you can do is we can store the value of n minus 1 in the n minus 2th variable that is p2 like p1's value will be stored in p2 and n's value will be stored in p1 so in this uh, by doing this we can ensure that the value of n is stored in p1 and the value of n minus 1 is stored in p2 and see that we need n and n minus 1 in order to get the value for n plus 1 right because these are the most recent consecutive number previous to n plus 1 the numbers that we need and the sum of the numbers that we need in order to get the value for n plus 1 right this way we can just transfer the value of p1 to p2 and the value of newly calculated n to p1 in order to ensure to, to get the value for the next value right okay now let's go over to uh it code and let's update our solution with the latest ones okay let me just remove this function as well um okay like we have discussed right so let's make two variables pre of one and pre uh, let's initialize it the values are zero and one because these are the two basic values that we need right let's also write a condition here like if n is less than equal to 1 we can return just n here first to just uh, you know just to manage the initial conditions for 0 and 1 now we have the value of prev 1 as 0 and prev 2 as 1 right so now let's uh, you know like let's have the value of i is equal to zero let's um let's think like what should we start from right if at all i am starting from okay let's make another variable the we don't need that variable actually okay so let's uh start it from here uh let's have int i is equal to from two right less than n then equal to n because yeah we don't like we also need value for n right let's understand this now if at all the value is one or zero we are returning from here right but if at all we are having a value greater than one that is from two up till n we are considering this for loop now let's understand this now say like if at all i's value is two what we'll do is um take another value that is the result is the result for the current i that means the result will have the value of fib of i right i hope you get it and for getting the fib of i we'll need the previous two values of one plus previous 
of 2 right now we have the result or the fib of i as this right now in the next part what we need to do to make sure that okay the naming conventions are bit tricky here so let's it previous to that is previous to previous of this one as zero and previous just previous one as previous one right what i mean by that is so i'm calculating the nth value so just the previous one will be denoted by prev of one and previous to previous will be denoted as prev of two right i hope you get it now let's uh make the changes and update the values prev two and prev one so now let's make Prev two updated with prev one. Let's make one updated with the result. Why? Because we need the last recent two values, right? So every time we are updating, we are just going in this loop, and we are each time we are calculating the result of the fib of i, and we are just returning it. Now imagine if at all we have reached the i value of n. In the same case, we'll be calculating the value of these two right we'll be updating prev2 with prev1 and prev1 with the rate test result now let's imagine and say what should we return we should return prev1 you know why because at the end of n we are storing the final result in prev1 and after that this loop will get uh you know like uh get completed and this the code flow will get out of this block this for uh, for loop block and it will come here so here we need to just return save of one right so run it here i hope uh, you have understood it and it is saying it is accepted let's go let's go for submit let's see whether it works or not i think it should yeah it does okay yeah it worked fine don't go for this uh beat 65 percent it's just so randomly because this is the most optimal one because this is indirectly or directly it is taking the value time completely as n because we are only iterating once that is up to n right so it is taking a time complexity of n and the space complexity is constant because we are not using any array or any other data structure we are only using the variables and to store the most recent value and calculate the next value so in that case the space complexity is big of one i hope you enjoyed the content this was it for this video i'll see you in the next video till then stay safe stay tuned